Hello everyone and welcome back to Local Chat. It is episode 39 for the 9th of the September of 30th, 2021. Nailed it first try. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is not Ian Gibson because he needs to sleep. It is David and Ian Elise is a from you Save the Data. recent episode of The Best, Ian is a coward. <laughs> Verifiable. <laughs> it's in the Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> Second definition, Ian Gibson. <laughs> you know, I was like, man, I feel like I just did local chat with David. And then I was like, it can't have been. It seems so recent. And then I realized you were on two day sh the best mm -hmm. show. And I was like, oh, that's where it's on. <laughs> I've been on more of your stuff than our stuff. The best. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, I'll, I'll get up the paperwork. When, there's room <laughs> um how are both of you uh how is uh how's canada canada's it's uh orange shirt day today so it's the indigenous day of remembrance that's oh. how canada's doing so that why is it an orange shirt that's a good question actually the visibility i'm not entirely sure that's my guess. It's like orange it's, to me. It's in remembrance of like the residential schools. Oh, that's and, cool. Uh, that yeah. that stuff's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I feel not. I don't mean to denigrate it at all, but I feel like that's going to be a really good like spotlight style movie in like a couple years once they figure everything out. Also, if you have not seen Spotlight, Spotlight is a fantastic movie. Yeah, I, I feel like I grew up in the age where that happened and then people were making all the Catholic jokes about it and I never really understood yep. it until I saw that movie and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I looked it up. The orange shirt is a symbol uh, inspired by the accounts of Phyllis Jack Webstead, whose personal inclu clothing, including a new orange shirt, were taken from her during her first day of residential school. Oh. That's, and never returned. That's so. pretty cool. I, I like that. That's like yeah. instead of them being like, oh, it's a color for love, it's like something that's like personal. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, that's great. Uh David, how's how's the new gig? How's the new California? How's laws? I mean, how's the recall? California's <laughs> fine ish. Still fire, but that's not new. Uh oh, right. There's just always fire. I just assume the whole state's on fire any given day. And that's usually a pretty safe assumption. <laughs> um, other than that, the new job's going good. I had some interesting times this morning, but it's all good. Nice, uh, nice. And um, glad that our governor didn't get recalled because the our alternatives were not good. So, <laughs> Yes, I'm very topical here on local chat. I make sure Speaking to ask everyone... <laughs> Speaking of recalls, Speaking of governors being recalled. Canada did have an election, like what? Oh two yeah. Ago? Oh. Uh, like a week and a half ago, and nothing changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally, like I think I think it was like the Liberals got one extra uh, person, extra representative, and conservatives like lost one and then the greens got one or some shit is like the tiniest changes <laughs> totally awesome. worth calling that multi-million dollar yeah. election yeah <laughs> very very productive thanks for that yeah it was a fantastic idea well we're not just here to talk about recalls and forest <laughs> fires uh we're also here to talk about video games uh we like to start off with what we've been playing uh at least since you're the latest acquisition or David, David's been on this show all the time. <laughs> so I'm going to have you go was on last week. You were on last week <laughs> and you were on the show on Tuesday. So sure. I don't really want to hear from, I'm actually going to mute him when he talks. So <laughs> at least you go That's first, uh, because actually the two things you've written down, I really want to hear about. So please en enlighten us. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I think I'll start with the Outer Wilds DLC. So this came out uh, just two days ago uh, on Tuesday. And as I've talked about before on this show, Outer Wilds is 
my top two games of all time. Uh, absolutely wonderful experience. And it's a game that you can't play twice unless you have fucking amnesia <laughs> or Alzheimer's or some shit. Um, it's a game you can't play twice. So the fact that there's DLC for it means that there's new secrets to discover, new stuff to go out and explore, which is really, really, like, I booted up the game and just, like, seeing that new title and knowing I had new things to find out and, like, hearing the music, I started to tear up because that game's so good. Um, I'm, I don't want to go into too many spoilers because this is Outer Wilds and it's a game best experience, like, completely fresh. But, um... They're doing some interesting things with, like, in the base game, it was all about discovering and finding, like, a lot of the, a lot of the learning that you do is from these literal walls of text, where there's, like, the nomai spirals that you can translate, uh, and it's, like, conversations that, sh- that you can glean a lot of information from. There's nothing like that here. There is Ooh. no text for the, except for like a couple things right in the beginning until you actually get to the new area. Um, which, which is a really, really interesting way to do it. Uh, instead they basically have, they've got like slide reels, um, basically PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> um, is like their kind of main way of giving uh, big blocks of information. And then obviously like everything else you can figure out along the way. Um, there is, though, and this is going into a little bit more spoilers, there's, like, some actual horror sections. And, like, if you've played Outer Wilds, there's, like, some scary parts there. But Mm -hmm. once you figure those out, they kind of cease to be scary, at least for me. Totally. This is, like, you just have to push through. Oh, no. And I'm not in that mood right now. <laughs> and I don't know if I will be for a while. So I've had yeah. to put the game down because I just can't, I just can't like do that. And I need to, to, to progress. I'm terrified now. Yeah. Um, I've, I've heard people say like, it's, it's less than an actual, like an outlast or an amnesia, but yeah, it's rough. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Now. Okay. We'll, we'll stop um, the talk there. So, uh, David can put his headphones no back on. Um, <laughs> I just can't believe that Jimmy Carter came back for the for the game. That's crazy. Um, be no, amazing. we'll move um, on. And uh, then that got me to back to Destiny Two, which is what I was playing before this. Um, before this, before Destiny Two, I was playing uh, Genshin Impact, and mm-hmm. I was just going through all the stuff I'd missed. Did the whole open worlds, uh, got like, did the whole story, did all the side stories, did most of the quests I'd missed. Um, and I'd gotten to the point where I was basically only logging into do my dailies, which is like 20 minutes worth of stuff. And then like, I had nothing else to play. So I saw a video, I, I've been playing Destiny for a couple of years now. Mm. Um, and I, I saw a video in my feed of someone I follow who covers Destiny. It's like, there's a really good gun that you can get at the gunsmith for free or for very, very cheap right now. Go get it. It's good. I'm like, okay, fine. I guess I'll log on and, (laughs) you know, download the updates and everything. And it's like, once you've broken through that barrier, it's like I'm sucked all the way back in. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, the new season, the new season started uh, just a couple weeks ago. I think we're five or six weeks into the season now. I skipped the last season, so I'm catching up on all the stuff from there. Unfortunately, if you skip a season, uh, the way they're doing seasons now, they used to just, like, you have the con- the seasonal content that's, like, the activity, uh, the guns, like, whatever. Mm-hmm. There's usually, like, one match-made activity, maybe a quest that's going through the story. The way they're doing it this year, and hopefully for next year, is that all those things last for the entire year until the next expansion. Oh. Which is really nice. Yeah, like... It used to be that those would go away and then the new season starts. So you can still play the stuff from Season of the Hunt, which was released like in November. Uh, which is great, but there is no way to buy old seasons except for buying the Legendary Edition upgrade 
which would mean buying every season. I have the three other seasons. So if I want to buy this season, it's like 25 bucks. Anyway, skip that season. It's not a big deal. It's not that much that I'm missing there. Um, but I came in and there's a new raid. New. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's the first raid from the original game that they brought back into Destiny 2 and kind of remastered. It's and Vault, I'm having Vault a lot of, glass, of fun right? there. Uh, it's Vault of Glass. Yeah. If you've played Vault of Glass. Um, there's all the seasonal activities. Um, there's, you know, going through the actual seasonal quest, which is really interesting. It's really starting to ramp up with, uh, uh, basically, have you played much Destiny 2? I played all the way through Forsaken, uh, and all that okay. content. And then I have bought everything since then, but I have only played <laughs> about a day of each. Because I'm a I'm a okay. bad person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna ask if you played Forsaken actually, because if you remember Alton Sov, he was like the the main bad guy there. Yeah. Um, in Season of the Hunt, which was like basically at the in November, the release of Beyond Light, he came back as a guardian. He yeah. was resurrected. Uh, He's Crow now. And uh, a lot of the seasons this year have been focusing on Crow, and especially this one. And also, if you remember Forsaken, um, when people beat the Vault of, or the, the Last Wish Ring and plunged the Dreaming City into the three week cycle, mm -hmm. this season is a lot about that and like the Awoken. Okay. So the, the story is really ramping up here, and I'm, I'm really enjoying that. Uh, in terms of the, the gameplay, like Destiny just feels so good just to shoot yeah. heads and like the guns the gun like effects the sounds the everything shooting heads getting your supers up and all that just it is probably the best feeling weapons in any game yeah ever at least at least for 100%. like first person shooters or for shooters in general so I'm at the point now where I'm just like doing my weekly uh, pinnacles. I'm almost at <laughs> at the pinnacle cap. So and then after that, I'm probably just going to be farming the guns in the Vault of Glass raid, doing my trying to do some grand grandmaster nightfalls, which I've never actually done before. <laughs> Ooh. And that's going to be tough, but <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, that's I I. I've tried to get back to into Destiny 2 a couple times, and I feel like I need like a couple friends to drop into it and just have them re-explain everything mm -hmm. to me. Because I, I came back when this latest season dropped. Uh, actually, it was right before it dropped. I like jumped back in the game, and there was like a random mission it had me start on. It didn't even bring me straight to the tower. And then there's like that helm place, and I didn't know what that was, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what any of the big machines did. Um, and as someone who like probably i could probably check but i probably have like 100 150 hours in destiny 2 um i it's weird to come to a game with that much game time and not understand anything anymore versus like every time i come back to world of warcraft basically i understand everything still except for like because the, the new content is so far past usually where i play that game so i feel like that's a good thing and a bad thing because there's always good new content in Destiny 2, but I'm getting lost in it versus stagnant wow, even though there is new content. So it's like a weird dilemma. Like, I'm not angry at Destiny for doing it. It's obviously a good thing, but... Um, it's just a weird... I feel like Destiny's, like, model is just... has gotten weird as hell. Yeah. Because, like, they I retire a lot of... It. They retire a lot of old stuff, which makes it... Yeah. easier for people to catch up because there's not as much content to go through but also like you might just be totally lost on <laughs> like, but, the story and what's happening yeah. and it's weird like the, uh, I, if they, someone joins us in two a lot of stuff like there you go at least yeah uh they retired a lot of stuff with beyond light because of they claim technical reasons we don't know the actual extent of that um but basically they wanted to keep the size low so that maintenance and everything was like actually doable for them as a 
you know, for the size of their team, which is understandable, but also really fucking sucks because they <laughs> retired a lot of good content. Yeah. Um, but that said, like, I was, I was really like sad when that happened, and I like came back to the game just before everything got retired and like tried to play through at least the most important stuff. Like I played through the campaigns, I played through uh, almost all the raids that got deleted. Um, that said, there's still a fuckload of content in Destiny. Yeah, <laughs> and totally. like I don't really feel the loss of those things that much. Uh, what I was going to say is I think a lot of the weirdness of Destiny 2 comes from the they are very, very averse to uh, power um, creep. Mm. Like, the guns are very much similar in power to what they were, yeah, in Forsaken. Uh, the, the, like, power level has increased a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got some new subclasses, we've got new exotics that, like, steadily make stuff more optimal, but you're still in the same realm, which means that you can come in and, like, not actually have that much to grind before you're at end game. Yeah, that's true. That's that's the good pen part. And like, that means, like, like, onboarding is quick, but it's, yeah. like... If you care about more than just getting to the most recent stuff, it's like, oh, it's so it's such a weird thing. It's part of why I haven't copped into it is like I want to know what's happening, and it doesn't sound like I'll know what's happening without consulting a wiki, and I'm like, eh, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's that's very true. And as far as we know, the only things they're deleting when the next expansion drops is the seasonal stuff from this year. They okay. haven't announced anything else, but it's possible that something else gets faulted yeah. as well. We'll see. They've they have said uh, and completely stopped sunsetting, which was uh, making gear like have a power cap, mm -hmm. so you couldn't keep bringing it up. But the vault is still in effect. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, yeah, I, I I have a weird relationship with that game, but I'll probably uh, it's, when the next big expansion comes out, I'll buy it and I'll play, I'll download it, and then I'll load it up, and I'll go sweet, and then I will stop playing it. Listen, I don't mind supporting them; it's not like a bad decision. Um, yeah. It's just yeah. burning money. Um, speaking <laughs> of burning money, David, uh, how has the games been? Uh good and okay so I, I think last time i was on i talked a little bit about kana i don't think i was very far in in kana last time i was on the show uh and i have finished it since then and you know it's very it's a ps2 game with ps5 graphics is kind of what i feel about kana um nice. when it comes to the art and the animation one of the best looking games thus far period uh it looks like a pixar movie in game form mm -hmm. and it is nearly that level of quality the whole way through um they made some interesting choices that i that i wasn't super hot on like they so the ps5 version it runs at, at higher fps right except for the cutscenes. the cut scenes run in like a lower fps so even though they look pretty like you get that visual in your mind it's like oh okay it looks stuttery because yeah i don't think it's running at 60 anymore i think it's down to like 24 or 30 with the normal stuff for like a uh, cut scene uh and wow. so it looks really weird when they're juxtaposed so close together and then and what is wild to me is i'm surprised they don't just have a ton of those animations in the game um and do some of the cutscenes that they did as animations just be in engine they did a lot of like you're in a cutscene movie instead of doing it in engine like a lot of games have done recently oh i see uh, and it definitely like fidelity wise yeah it's prettier that way but not by a ton and it would have been less less jarring if they did some of those in engine uh not all of them because some of them were crazy and you wouldn't have been able to do an engine um without doing a lot of extra work 
compared to just doing an animation. But hey, they they're an animation studio. They know what they're doing with animation, so they leaned on that. Um, and overall, it the game did feel kind of clunky. I never turned the difficulty back up. I think I don't know if I had hit that point when I talked about it last time. I know uh, you were fighting the wood boss. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was like a wolf. Um, there's like a wolf boss. It's the first major boss. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a bunch of smaller ones before him. And I, it got like really hard really fast. Like it was a difficulty cliff, not even curve. And I finally almost had that sucker down. And then he glitched once while he was charging me and he had like 10% of his health left and I died. Oof. And I was done with that. So I turned it to baby mode and finished <laughs> the game. Uh, and I had a lot more fun because I think that's what I expected with the art style too. Yeah. And like the tone. Like I didn't expect a super difficult game, nor did I really want it when I picked it up. So I was glad that I could turn it down. Uh, that was fun. Uh, yeah, to me, it, like uh, difficulty wise seems like how Ratchet and Clank was. Like, that's how I feel like that game should feel. Yeah, that's what I expected. Uh, and it was way difficult. Like, really? That first major boss, I did 10 or 15 tries before turning it down. Wow. Wow. Uh, like, it, it, wow. it really ramped up difficulty fast. Um, and it, it's not like it would have been impossible. It was doable. It was just like, that's not what I wanted from this game. Like, I, I wanted something chill. I didn't want something that was Dark Souls. Yeah. Um, so, overall, it was an okay game. Um, the animation was great. I thought the story was fine. Characters were fine main character was a nothing burger um which <laughs> felt bad i i had more interest in the side characters than the main character for pretty much every oh, single man. one which is not a good sign for <laughs> for your main yeah. character hey and what if we told that things... story over there instead of the one we're telling right now <laughs> yeah i mean and, and it, the stories for the other characters were interesting uh to a degree um but and told in an interesting way like you basically see for each section of the game essentially you're trying to heal a specific character mm -hmm. and at the beginning of the section you get like a weird jumbled flashback where it's like it doesn't make sense and then as you progress through that uh character's area you get the full story through addition like the cutscenes being completed essentially which is a cool way to tell a story and i did enjoy that part I, th I thought that was well done um i just wish the characters were a more interesting and b i wish kana had any interesting things about her at all um they left some mysteries just un <laughs> investigated like a character points out a thing on on kana and i was like yeah i want to know about that never addressed <laughs> <laughs> like she's got some weird stuff going on with like one of her arms and they're just like yeah it's happening oh man i was gonna make a joke about like hey what's up with your robot arm and just like never address it <laughs> i mean not entirely wrong <laughs> but not right either uh and it was just really weird that they brought it up and then they're just like yeah it's there moving on never coming back um so yeah it, it was fine I, I did enjoy my time with it wasn't like i hated the game or anything but it wasn't like, mm -hmm. great uh, and then just last night, I started uh, Life is Strange True Colors, which came out a few weeks ago. Uh, and I'm I'm through the first chapter. I think it's five chapters, like all the previous Life is Strange games. Uh, and so far, I'm digging it. Um, the I, I am so happy that we have moved past high school. Oh, yes. my God. Very happy that this game takes place post high school. That's great. Love that fantastic um the character's power is interesting it has some weird social elements to it that some people have commented on of it not being great because essentially your power is empathy to a like curse level yeah um and there there's definitely some tropes with like the over empathic female main character thing that i'm like yeah yeah i'm not here for those tropes necessarily but so far it seems pretty well done and interesting um it lets you it's not just empathy it's like empathy almost to the point of telepathy which is what makes it kind of cool um so it's not just you can see what emotion they're feeling and then you feel it too that does happen 
but it's also you see things kind of the way those characters see them and you even get some of the backstory to why they are feeling that the way that they're feeling which Mm -hmm. does make for a more interesting thing than yeah i know you're angry or sad or depressed or uh frightened or whatever so i'm having fun with it so far i'm not super deep into it um but there's already some some interesting choices usually the first chapter they don't present you with anything like crazy choice wise which was true here um and i do always love with the life is strange i think telltale does this too um where at the end of the chapter it shows you like what other people in the world chose and then if you have friends that played it it shows you what your friends chose uh that stuff is cool uh and i'm liking it here so far i was a little little mad because i didn't pick anything weird apparently i felt like i did a few times and i was like ah damn everyone picked (laughs) (laughs) i um i've been watching uh next lander has been playing through it so i've been watching them play it and i was extremely confused the first like two episodes they streamed uh because i the the tell me why game that don't nod made that's about the the twins and one is trans, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I got all yeah. of that marketing and this game's marketing confused. Oh, so I was watching yeah, no, Vinny and Alex play through it. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, this game's pretty cool. Like, it's cool that no one's addressing that this girl's trans or anything. Like, they're just like, they're, it's like all normal. And then, nope, I, and then I like looked it up and I was like, oh, I'm wrong. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm so stupid because <laughs> I yeah, thought that I, was like the crux of this game, and then I realized I it was a completely twins, different one. Or if it's just a close age difference for, oh, for yeah. Life is Strange. Um, but yeah, like the the main character you play, but essentially you and your brother had gone through the foster care system and gotten separated, yeah. uh, and your brother had gotten out of the foster care system earlier and basically had found a successful life was doing good and was trying to find you because you've gotten separated it's very hard to track down your sibling in the foster care system and essentially as you're leaving the foster care system he finds you and the game starts with you meeting him Mm -hmm. uh, for the first time in like almost a decade uh and it was cool i i felt like they did nail down like a, a a strange sibling vibe of like oh i love you but i also haven't seen you in a long time and i don't know if you're the same and like yeah. i got you this thing <laughs> but i don't know if you still like this anymore <laughs> so they i felt like they nailed the right amount of like awkward but loving and trying but also trying not to like overstep your boundaries they really nailed the tone in the first chapter i I felt like and especially with the main character essentially moving to a new town too uh it's like moving to a tiny town and everyone knows who you are before you even arrive is essentially how it is because small town everyone talks your brother's excited that you're coming to, to stay with him so you get there and everyone's like, oh, hi, like, I know you, <laughs> hug. And Alex, the main character, is like, oh, my God. <laughs> People. Um, but overall, I'm having a good time. Uh, I, I hope it stays as good as it is. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I've been really enjoying watching it. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably not the type of game I would play, but I really enjoy watching those types of games. So I'm glad it's to say It's a very good, and this is why I picked it up, starting my first week back at work is like it's a very good chill while your brain's still kind of tired but you can still play this game and you have to yeah you can take your time it's although good. i'm pissed because i really love the music in the first one and then i played the prequel one i played the first episode of that and i really dug the music in that but they are playing in the streamer mode, so I don't get to hear any of the music. Oh yeah, it's I, from what I know, the streamer mode is really bad. And I, they, it's just I muted. D- I did see the one like. Mm-hmm. It's so. It's like that Tom Cruise mummy trailer without the music yeah. in it. It's so bad. I can't. I don't know why they didn't put like royalty free music to at least go yeah. during that scene i don't i don't know why they did, did that, that the, like dancing scene 
Yeah. yeah. And, and but there's multiple scenes. Something else. There's multiple. There was like uh, a, there's also there's like a somber scene late like a little bit into the game that has a somber song during it, but you don't hear it. You just see all the sad <laughs> things. So it's just like so weird and I I can't and I they were even saying uh, Vinny was saying when he uploaded the episode to YouTube, some of the background music that wasn't taken out was then tagged on yeah on youtube so it's like what's they, the point they did it's pretty much all licensed music which is cool if you're playing it horrible if you're a content creator um but the thing that even got me is there is a moment where the main character is playing a cover of creep yes and the even the subtitles do not work in that section because there was some weird licensing thing wow. so just for the the subtitles the whole time it just says like alex singing wow really <laughs> and i'm like what the fuck that's weird <laughs> i wonder if that's what like a, a weird stupid thing you need a license for the lyrics like text display them? yeah i think lyrics I and like audio are a separate license that's so Which weird. Is, That's bizarre. Yeah. It was, Copyright it was they would get out. And it might, maybe they didn't get the lyrics because they only paid for the rights to do a cover of the song instead of actually paying for the full song. That's my assumption for what it is, but still, like, music rights and games, fucking <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, you need to figure that out. Uh, please, <laughs> industry. Yeah, that's... Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I, I've, yeah, like I said, I've been really enjoying watching them play it. So um, I I feel like that first game was so special other than yeah. some certain, part, certain, certain parts of it. But uh, yeah, that's great. Because I know the, was it two? Was there a two? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know that, that one didn't do as well. So I'm glad they're like, I, I yeah, feel like it's, they're fun, moving uh... on a lot. That's the one with like the two boys like running away yeah. from home, right? It's the oh, two uh, brothers. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like that one was just like people were done with the chapter model by that point. They're like, yeah. oh, the whole game's not out, pass. And this one, thank God, they finally went back to putting the whole game out. And they uh, also, it wasn't just that people were done with the chapter model. It's like it took like over a year for that game to release fully, like yeah. from chapter one to chapter end, I th- from chapter one to chapter done. done. I don't think that was true for two. Uh, I think I'm that was true sure for the first pretty, one. I know. Um, I'm it was pretty it, sure it was like a couple months between each. I think the prequel like that. The, whole thing out. the prequel took forever to get out. Uh, that I remember. Uh, I, I think I played chapter oh, one wait, of that. It and... did almost take a year. I'm wrong. I'm definitely wrong. Yeah. Oh, no, it took more than a year. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, the and first the... episode released in September 2018, and the last one released December of the what? next year. Took way too long. Yeah, didn't the yeah. the collector's yeah. edition collection just got delayed too? The like, um, the remaster. The collection. remaster. That's what it is. Yeah, uh, and, and is I that... think the remaster is one and before the storm, not two. Oh, I was just about to ask what it was. That's even it's crazier. Two... Two was a little too recent to remaster. I was like 2018. So. Yeah, but at least throw it in. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, Halo Five is in the Master Chief Collection. They didn't remaster. It. No, it's not. Or I mean, Halo Four. <laughs> but I don't. They didn't. No, I, Halo Four, but they didn't remaster Halo Four, right? Correct. Because that was they a one remaster. game. Yeah, yeah, that's what I. They did not remaster. Um, and you jumped on that correction. Um, that's because I wanted to play through the whole Halo thing, and I downloaded the Master Chief Collection on my computer, and then it's like, oh, five isn't even available on PC, and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> I I made it like halfway through five before I stopped. Uh, that's uh, okay. I made it halfway through two, and I'm done with the series now. So, <laughs> oh, three's good. Yeah. ODST is good too. Uh, um, they contain the flood, which I'm done with. ODST doesn't, so you might like that one. Uh, um, anyways, I mine's quick. I've been playing RimWorld still. I've started introducing mods again because I need some uh, to make life easier. Uh, that game is great. I think I just hit 140 hours or something. Nice. Not bad. 
um diablo 2 resurrected i purchased i played a tiny bit and then i said i don't have time for this so i refunded it and the kind <laughs> kindly man at battlenet gave me my money back which is very nice um and then my brain went oh you should spend that money on new world and then someone else kindly pointed out that i should not get into new world because i also don't have time for that as well was that me? Did I think I it was that? you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, hearing that New World is actually pretty good, which is well, not yeah, what I was expecting. I was surprised. I was. Um, I see a lot of coverage of it at work, and uh, there's a lot of like, there's something about it. What was it? Oh, the you can't swim, but you can walk underwater, and you can die from drowning in certain areas. So it's as if there was a swimming mechanic that they just took out. And then the game goes above and beyond to put into the lore why there are no mounts and that like animals go feral and wild and you shouldn't have them carry things. And that's why like people don't ride them. It's like, why would you do that to yourself? Because what if this game was incredibly successful and you wanted to add mounts eventually? Yep. <laughs> like, well, yeah. then they're just going to make, oh, well, we learned to tame them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I hate that. We learned to tame the <laughs> robot, robot animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the Horizon Zero Dawn route. <laughs> um, and then I, I played a little bit of Super Liminal just because I've, we were talking about this in the pre show, but I um, do a lot of work, my day job, at my computer. So I like to, after work, go and play in the living room or watch TV in the living room. So Super Liminal has been fun. It's very Portal vibes. Uh, it's the one where you, like, grab objects and the way you're looking at it yeah. makes it bigger or smaller. Um, so that's been really fun to figure mm -hmm. stuff out uh, with that. Um, also, something I didn't know, that game does really funny loading screens. Um, oh where like the bar will load up but the bar kept getting longer every time it reached it and like bigger and like <laughs> each one like at one point it was loading and then it turned the whole screen turned like a cube and loaded up the next side like they keep throwing those jokes in and i'm like ah this is pretty cute i'm into it um <laughs> and then the final game i've been playing is called will got a 3d printer and he can't stop printing everything um i printed this tiny little guy and then I blew him up three times the size <laughs> and he got that big. And then I printed out a little space battleship Yamato. Oh, and then nice. I blew that nice. one up and it's even bigger. <laughs> but this one, Ooh. the like pieces, uh, I pulled them off so I could clean them a little bit better. Uh, and then I got like this container ship that's pretty good. Uh, oh, man, you, I... I know. Once it's... a thing. Sorry, I need to Google something. <laughs> and then uh, I've my new project, uh, which I've always wanted, is a really good Blade Runner blaster. And I I have one that I built years ago, but now I can three D print one. And I wish I could like have you guys here, but oh, no. the print Someone quality on this this uh, slider receiver that I printed is like crazy good, and I'm very excited. But all the pieces take like 10 hours to print. Uh, and I was going to start it today, but I knew I had the podcast and it would be extremely loud. Uh, not extremely loud, but annoyingly in loud enough. So I'm going to start it after the podcast. Uh, Will, you just made me order a 3D print. I hate you. You ordered a 3D print or a 3D yeah, printer? Print, print, print. <laughs> I'm not ordering a whole printer. No. This whole, me, oh, what are you yeah. printing? That's less intense. I'm going to print out the Delphinus from Skies of Arcadia. Oh. Are you getting a resin print or? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Nice. <laughs> I'm Googling I, um, <laughs> Yeah, because I, I, I've been researching enough printer stuff now that, like, for miniatures and stuff, you want resin printers. So I was like, oh, I should get a resin printer so I can start making miniatures and start. Oh, I want, like, a kind of big yeah. one. I've been. I've it's been ba it's an airship. It's, it's oh, gotcha. it is an airship. That's. I wonder if I could print it. You, you should, gotta have uh, some detail there. Send me you if, you find, if you find if you find any thousand. files. Send, send, send it to me. I'll, I'll print it out. <laughs> and I can ship it to you. Um. But yeah, it's been really fun. I I think I'm used to like, 
3D printer technology from like 10 years ago when it wasn't crazy good. And now that it's crazy good, uh, yeah, I like, even though like there's still those, those lo- like print lines and stuff, but I sanded this enough that it's like pretty much gone. So I don't know. I'm excited. I've really been enjoying it. It's kind of kicked up as my hobby now. Gotta go look. This little, yeah, I could print this easy, easy lemon squeezy. So pretty. I'll print that. I'll print it and then I'll flaunt it. Um, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll burn it. I'll melt it. Um. Anyways, that's all the games I've been playing. I feel like there was something else, but oh, sorry, there is something else. Castlevania Advance Collection I purchased, and I have been playing through mm, the no. first game on there, whose name I only see when I go to the main menu, so I don't remember is uh but that's been pretty fun uh only (laughs) the best part is it has a rewind feature so i feel invincible uh because every time i die (laughs) i literally just rewind my character back and then like that's the way games should be played like screw the people Uh, who think i mean no i i I did that um i did that at the beginning because i was like still learning the game and i kept mess it was like i kept messing up I kept hitting the menu button instead of uh, like the whip button and the jump in whichever game I'm playing is like really weird where you like have to hold it down to jump higher. And I'm not into it. Uh-huh. Um, but I think which one game, are you playing? That's got to look it up. Uh, I play. I don't know anything uh, about Castlevania. Castlevania. I just know some people I listen to or who I trust their opinions on old games. We're like, oh, Dracula X is a literal trash fire of a castle. I'm playing game. Circle of the Moon. Oh, that's supposed to be one of the good ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's good. It's just I that's, really have to get used oh, to Circle it. Circle of the Moon is like the, it's like this kind of sequel to, uh, Symphony of the Night, right? It's like the uh, the first Game Boy Advance one. Yeah, it's the first Game Boy Advance one. And I played Symphony of the Night two years ago, last year, and I I really really enjoyed it. So. Uh, and I know uh, they say Aria of Sorrow is else. Oh, so. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was only 20 The only bucks. Castlevania I've played is, is Symphony of the Night. However, to access, to play the best version of Symphony of the Night, according to the internet, the one with like, the best translation and everything, you need to play through like a good half of Rondo of Blood. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, you need to play the PSP uh, like version of Rondo of Blood, where if you go through a separate path, like a secret path, and then like get a collectible uh, in this one weird place, it unlocks the entire game of Symphony of the Night in a menu with like a better translation and like some extra added content. That's so stupid. (laughs) Story. story. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I have played like half of Rondo of Blood. Oh my! I have I I have a weird obsession with Castlevania is one of those game series that I haven't played a lot of, but I have a weird obsession with it where I just want to like, I it's like it's like Castlevania are toys and I just want to own all the toys and look at them. <laughs> um, like I really like one, two, and three, and Symphony of the Night was great. That even the Lord of Shadow game Xbox game I played for a little bit, like this is pretty fun um i don't know what it is uh i'm about castlevania uh anyways i, mean, I don't want to like the, uh, the new ones that aren't technically castlevania uh bloodstains oh i i played the so uh, i watched um it was giant bomb at the time i watched Vinny play through that and then i played maybe three hours of the nes demake version that he put out and then yeah what's the that's bloodstain ritual mm. of the night yeah the ritual of the night is the symphony of the night remake right but then yeah. there's like curse of the moon curse of the moon that's what it is and there's two yeah. of those now i think i don't actually remember oh um, there is yeah, so those what? Uh, those I need what? to play because those are interesting because you get like the multiple characters and you can go to different spots and and like the new the new who's who of Castlevania. 
Yeah, I, I, I wanted uh, Ritual the Night to be far away enough in memory that I can uh, pick it up and play it. I think it, it was on Game Pass at one point. It might still be. Um, I don't know. Anyways, I don't know um, we should probably get to the news, which means I gotta play the news theme, which means y'all gotta get your ears lubed for this delicious news theme. <laughs> Not gonna play because didn't turn the volume back up. News theme. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What is up, news? <laughs> a famous saying by a famous man who's now in Fire Emblem. A um, lot of news this week, folks. Uh, big ones, big ones. Uh, who is excited about PlayStation acquisitions? Listen, why was this not announced like four months ago when they leaked it? <laughs> who knows? Uh... <laughs> it's the same thing with the... Uh, it was like the Horizon uh, delay like when they announced it i literally was like wait wasn't this announced but it was a rumor like playstation is the no. worst company of jumping on rumors no 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 no. they leaked this playstation of japan <laughs> when they were announcing the other studios that were getting oh, acquired yeah playstation japan's twitter tweeted the blue point <laughs> i forgot about that yeah, it's like they had two versions of the image, one with Blue Point in like yeah. the, the list of Sony first party studios and one without it. That's why I was so confused when I saw this. Yeah. I also part of my confusion, I thought they announced ac acquiring Blue Box, the abandoned developer, and I was like, oh no, oh, <laughs> please no. <laughs> it's like that would have been a nightmare. But also that like would have been a nightmare. Blue Point was already basically a first party studio for PlayStation. Totally. Like they only made PlayStation games. Yeah. They uh, someone, basically worked first hand with PlayStation anyway. Someone said they they um of course I got Blue Point doesn't they made a couple Xbox uh ports. Remember what I they would find out for you? Who did that? Uh if you want to look that up. Let's see. Not recently. No, um, it's like they did a Titanfall port to 360 in 2014, and that is the only Xbox Jeez, game they've done. That's thing. <laughs> uh, the rest were all PlayStation 3. Oh, I, I guess light. they did. Oh, sorry, sorry. They did the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, which was That's on PlayStation was. and Xbox. Um. However, the easiest place to play it now is Xbox. <laughs> Thank you, backwards compatibility. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think this is, I mean, obviously a long time coming. It makes sense. Um, a lot of people being like, oh, I guess Sony's going to remaster things forever. Uh, but Nibel, uh, the infamous tweeter, did tweet that they're supposedly their next game is title. Uh, which is great. I'm kind of saddened by that, though. <laughs> I I also don't care if you remake everything. I, like some of those remasters yeah. are absolutely gorgeous. So, like in my heart, I'm like remaster Metal Gear and then do your own game. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> remaster all the Metal Gears and make it one game that plays like Metal Gear Solid Five. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, that I just game would be like harder. 300 hours long. <laughs> Ugh. I just opened up Twitter to look at this Nibel tweet, and the first thing I see in the trending tab is Grey's Anatomy airing on NBC, and I swear to God, I thought the image that they had for this was fucking Spec Ops The Line. <laughs> <laughs> Spec Ops The Line debuts <laughs> on <Great> NBC. <laughs> it is a great game. Um... Yeah, that I mean, man, I can't believe I forgot about that whole PlayStation Japan yes. thing. It's like flooding back yeah. into my memory. And then there was, uh, I forget who it was. It was either, I think it was Daniel Ahmad, that that analyst, mm -hmm. who then tweeted like, the only PlayStation studio like office to not have a, have tweeted about the acquisition was PlayStation Japan. Yeah. <laughs> They're not falling for Daniel it twice. 
uh, replied to the Nibel tweet with the irony is this time the PlayStation <laughs> JT has not tweeted about it yet. <laughs> They're double checking <laughs> the whole pipeline. Oh, dude. And then Nibel has fire right afterwards. It's a shame because you would have learned which company would get acquired next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> Oh, I love those. Those folks are great. Follow oh. Nibel and Daniel Lamont on they're Twitter. Great they're great because inf they're informative. And then when they're joking about stuff, the right number of people fall for it. And then you feel smart <laughs> for not falling for it. Yes. It just, oh, it's fantastic. Um, uh, other PlayStation news. They uh, handed over the Twisted Metal series to Destruction All-Stars developer Lucid Games. Uh we streamed a little bit of Destruction All Stars. Ian did not like it at all. I thought it looked kind of dumb. Um, so... Yeah, it didn't look good. I'm shocked you guys streamed it. Yeah, we. I mean, it was a free game. Of course, we're going to stream. I it. guess that's true. Yeah. Uh, and the PS5 had somewhat just launched. You think uh, PlayStation acquires Lucid Games in the I next mean, year? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go to our Sony Japan correspondent <laughs> to find out. <laughs> uh, yeah i i mean maybe with an established ip where they can like do violence and stuff that like I that game for one i could tell played well All so stars didn't have the twisted metal ip already i know um <laughs> also apparently the creator of twisted metal is pissed off that they did they're also working on yeah, a TV he's show. Mad they didn't call him, and it's like, hey, listen, Twisted Metal died for a reason. Maybe there's a reason they didn't call you, bro. <laughs> yeah, and like, I know that that's it's mean to say, but also like, hey, you don't work there anymore, so yeah, I mean, get over it. They don't. They're not required to call you. Yeah, go cry into your money pile from PS One. <laughs> Enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> get in the PS Two slash ps3 era too yeah that's true uh i thought this was interesting i don't know if you guys saw this um christopher yeah. judge the actor for kratos as well as tilk from stargate that one is for you one? ian tilk uh, no, no no kratos kratos oh yeah <laughs> okay i mean I, I i don't know how uh you know, smart people pronounce it but the way it's pronounced oh no it's, the... it's okay Ongoing joke between me and Zach. Uh, my favorite game of all time, Tales of Symphonia, has a Kratos in it. Who it's pronounced Kratos, and then God of War has Kratos, and it gets confusing. And Anyways, just, the voice actor from Kratos people. from Tales of Symphonia uh, <laughs> tweeted that uh, no, Christopher Judge Kratos, God of War. Uh, he tweeted that uh, the game was delayed because of his surgery in August of 2019. Uh, he had back surgery, hips replaced, knee surgery. They waited for him to rehabilitate. Basically, taking the brunt of why God of War Ragnarok was delayed. Um, nice of him to do. Uh, I like that. I mean, good to know, and I'm glad he got his surgery and everything. But also, I didn't think that game was delayed I had no animosity towards that game being delayed. I don't know if what he was seeing was a bunch of people having I animosity don't think towards anyone it. Anyone believed them when they said it was coming out this year in the first place? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've talked to a single person that yeah. saw that trailer and was like, "Yeah, it's coming next year." Everyone's like, "No, it's not." Exactly. <laughs> I like. I'm not. I'm not pissed off that it's not coming out. I'm also. I'm not. Even if he's saying he's to blame, I'm also not blaming him because it's a multi-million billion dollar company and game developer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good for him. Uh, but I, I mean, also props to Santa Monica for giving him the time off and all that sort of stuff for his surgery and everything. Like, that's incredible. Uh, I'm glad I mean, it's also, not. Also, listen, what are you going to do if you're Santa Monica Studio? You have Christopher Judge, the extremely well-known actor <laughs> yeah. an extremely well-known voice of kratos in your hit yeah. game what are you gonna do be like sorry you've got to come in with a broken pelvis that's just been replaced uh because we need your voice no I, you, that's not gonna work <laughs> you come in right now we're gonna take that pelvis back <laughs> or if you replace him guess what's also not gonna work that you, you, no. you can't replace him at this point well, yeah, you come no, up with a gameplay reason. No, what you do is you reason. go into the hospital with the microphone <laughs> and some, <laughs> and some, 
portable like sound <laughs> metal tie walls and you just set, say talk you set up a, pa a pattern of the heart monitor beeps to remove it from the audio and then you're good <laughs> it's perfect it's like chris we, we only really need one word from you said multiple different ways can you give us a boy <laughs> yeah. boy, boy, boy 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 he really uses his whole pelvis but he does say boy <laughs> i mean they, um, they actually act out the scenes oh for totally, the totally. Uh, so. no <laughs> but i'm i'm happy he got his surgery i'm happy they're working on the game i am not mad the game was delayed uh, i'm happy but, even that it got delayed because they will be better for it so yeah 100 percent. also i am extremely pissed off that they use the same boat animation Can you guys pull no Shut up! So stupid. <laughs> oh, and I saw that the game person... looks so similar to God of War 20, 2018. It must I be did. I did love that. Even on Reddit, someone posted that, and the top comment was just like, "Shut up." <laughs> the, the best part is the person who tweeted it is like very clearly a like troll account. Like they say they're a troll yeah. account. Like they're like, "Oh, my biggest troll tweet," and like people still were like falling for it. I'm like, stop. Uh, gotta get those engagements uh speaking of engagements and denying my advances uh nintendo has denied everyone that there is a 4k switch coming out even though there's a bloomberg article by uh takahashi i just died in mochizuki takahashi? oh that one okay sorry uh sorry. and olga karif karif sorry i'm terrible at pronouncing names i don't know why i dove into that that far um, that a couple companies have uh, told them that they have been in possession of Nintendo's 4K development kit and uh, have tested games on it, uh, including a... Sorry. Reading and talking at the same time. For Zynga, uh, it was 11 game companies said their teams were in possession of it. Um, for people who don't know, the OLED model just launched on October 8th, or is going to launch on October 8th. Rain is... Uh, I just thought this was super interesting because this is like that long running rumor. Like it was the biggest rumor and like it seemed like open secret. And then they announced the OLED one. All talk of it went away. And now it's skyrocketing back into the conversation. Listen, even if it doesn't come out, even if there isn't a 4K switch or whatever, it is clear that Nintendo planned on having one. <laughs> like, right. At this point. Yeah. And it's clear they gave them out to developers to yeah. do stuff on, even if, if it's if not Bloomberg a real thing. can get 11 devs to say, yeah, we had a 4K Switch dev kit. Uh, it's real. It may not come to market, but it is real. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but Nintendo uh, tweeted, um, I think this was yesterday when the article came out, a new re a news report on September 30th. Uh, falsely, no, this was today. Sorry, falsely claims that Nintendo is supplying tools to drive. It was yesterday. It's Japan oh, time. You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, supplying tools to drive game development for Nintendo Switch with 4K support to ensure correct understanding among our investors and customers. We want to verify this uh, report is not true. We also want to restate that as we announced in July, we have no plans for any new model other than Nintendo Switch OLED model, which will launch on October 8th, 2020. Um, also, like I'm not blaming Nintendo on this. You have to say that because you like they specifically I mean, address customers and investors. Like we're you not could announcing just anything. Not say anything. But, yeah, yeah, but they're the type of company that gets out in front of it. This don't take the yes. statement as they're not working on it, but they have to say that for obvious reasons. It's Nintendo um, lies. <laughs> Nintendo, they're a bunch of liars. Nintendo is known to lie. Listen, I love Nintendo right All now because. <laughs> I'm getting my N64 games, uh, 64 controller. I don't care about the Sega Genesis. I'm getting um, Donkey Kong at Super Nintendo oh, World. Okay. Yeah. Well. I was so mad there wasn't a uh, around the monitor because Chris would have been forced to talk about this. Um, I mean, you know what? We might just stick it on there next week just, you know. just to spite him. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea um they announced that super mario world uh sorry super nintendo world uh they are opening a donkey kong themed area in 2024 um yeah. yeah i mean that place is is doing gangbusters from what i can tell uh i watched a bunch of those like ride videos 
which seemed super fun. The food looks delicious and cool. Um, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you slowly expand out? And then yeah, and at I... the center of it all will be an arena where all the characters fight. Super Smash Brothers. Hell yeah. Super Smash Brothers Arena. I want to say that <laughs> even the the early like drawings of the park that leaked or whatever, I'm pretty sure those included like DK area plans. So I don't, I don't oh. think this is new, but it's the first but, time they actually announced it. Yeah, they're it. announcing it. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see them open all so sorts cool. of stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. More dude, power dude. to it. I'm, I'm honestly surprised they partner, partnered with Universal Studios and didn't just make their own park. <laughs> I feel like that's the kind of yeah. thing where you just want someone with experience to do it right. Yeah. Rather that's than true. figure it out mm. yourself. Um, true. Yeah. Makes sense. That's, that's it is interesting. How much of the how much of the Donkey Kong IP is owned by Rare, and how much can I actually get for this? IP is not at all owned by Rare. Just yeah. some of the games get weird. Right. Yeah, but it's like the, what parts of those games? Right? I think it's just the games themselves. Like the yeah. I'm pretty like, sure it's just like the publishing of the games. I'm, yeah, because it's more like a licensing stuff. Yeah. Because like like. Yeah. Uh, like if Hitman's James Bond game comes out, they it's not like they get royalties from a James Bond thing that happens later, you know. Yeah. Um, true, but true. that's actually true. I've never thought about if. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying there isn't. There could be a royalty agreement somewhere with like someone who worked at Rare or anything, but I highly doubt it because Nintendo is stingy. Um, no, they would have kept all all those rights. It varies from deal to deal, but I can't imagine Nintendo being like, yeah, you can have... Donkey Kong already existed before the Rare game, so I don't think they would have surrendered any of those characters or IP. Well, yeah. it's, it, it's not about surrendering characters. It's like the stuff that they added. Oh, I see game. what you're saying. So like like lore stuff or anything. Yeah. Um, no, I. that's what I'm saying. I don't like characters and story i'm pretty sure are all owned by nintendo yeah the only thing rare has a say in is like distribution and because like, anything they those. added would have to have been double checked by nintendo anyway yeah nintendo True. is like crazy on that stuff yeah. so i i can't imagine any of that's owned by like, rare yeah nintendo is like star wars with adding stuff versus marvel comics which they can just uh yeah. Don't really have to. There's a Bible out there for Donkey Kong. It's a PDF and it's sitting on <laughs> a computer and it's very disturbing because it has everything. Um, I'm just going to hit these quick hits here at the end here. There was a perfect dart update, dark update. They're partnering with Crystal Dynamics. Um, Weird for Crystal, but yeah. Yep, but sure. Go for it. Tomb Raider. Um, Hasbro opens a brand new AAA games division. This one I'm genuinely excited about because A, there's a picture of Peppa Pig and B, I really enjoy Hasbro, crappy Hasbro video games. Um, oh, okay. I, I thought you were going to be excited for like an actual game. No, absolutely but this not. Makes more sense. This makes more um, sense. Karen and I have played plenty of, uh, the game of life video game. The Monopoly video game, the Trivial Pursuit, um, Risk. There's a bunch. We just have them on the Xbox. And when you're very inebriated or very um, in the clouds, it is fun to play those games because they make they just require nothing. There's no input. It's just all output. All the Trivial Pursuit stuff is from 2013. And none of it, none of the pop culture stuff is relevant at all. And it's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's fun. See, but Will, these are AAA I the games. I Listen. think the interesting IP here are, look, fucking, who cares about fucking Peppa Pig or Monopoly or <laughs> fucking, <laughs> sorry. I'll cut you. Um, the interesting IPs here for me are Wizards of the Coast and Transformers. Um, I'm not. Least, a, I'm not a huge into Transformers, but like I've got good news for you then, because the first game is GI Joe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's none of those ones. <laughs> but there is there is a lot of IPs here that are not just like 
you know, the family board games that actually are yeah. just the worst yeah. board games you can ever play. <laughs> it's true. They like, are terrible. <laughs> uh, like, there's actual... There's really yeah. good stuff you could do with the Transformers game, with the uh, Magic the Gathering game, with the uh, Dungeons the, and Dragons game, despite some very recent rocky history with that IP. <laughs> I, I think like, doing, like, more... Cough. Dark Alliance um, cough. Yeah. Uh, more like Baldur's Gate and like, I mean, honestly, I would love to see them. Uh, I know they're doing that Baldur's Gate three, but like more RPG stuff in a sort of grand fashion with a budget and all that sort of stuff would be would be neat. It'd be fun to see um more current uh like uh and I think what it's called fifth edition. There we go. Uh, stuff like directly translated so like if yeah. a fifth edition uh uh man or uh story comes out there could also be the fifth edition game there could be the fifth edition uh oh man i would like love like sort of a fifth stuff. edition version of like neverwinter specifically yeah. neverwinter nights world but like make yeah. that fifth edition and have a new cool story with an actual budget that'd be dope i'm here for that I mean, the new Baldur's Gate three is kind of that. It is. It is fifth yeah. edition. It is. Yeah. Oh, it's. I didn't uh, realize it was fifth edition. Yeah, it is. It is almost exact. It's like slightly modified fifth edition. Um, and then also like it isn't fifth edition, but there's uh, the the two Pathfinder games now. The one that just released like mm -hmm. what a couple weeks ago, like, a couple days ago. Um. And and the one that released a couple years ago, Kingmaker. That are literally just slightly modified Pathfinder, which is yeah. three point five. But when does um yeah. when does Baldur's Gate three actually come out, or is there not a date yet? I don't think we have a date. That's yet. a good question. It's still in early access. Um, but yeah. honestly, my my experience there is that I think I prefer like the Pillars of Eternity route, which is actually simplified even more because a lot of that shit is not actually that conducive to a good video game. Yeah, that's mm. true. Um, I, I, every time I see Wizards, I just think about how much I would like to play again. Uh, and I haven't played in a while, but I'm also always amazed when I go to check Wizards' site and it's like 15 new books have come out since I last checked. <laughs> and it's like, I want all of these. And then you put them on your birthday list and then you get a bunch of dozen dragons book for your birthday and you're like ah why did i want all these i don't even play um well you're just in the business of burning money listen <laughs> if money isn't on fire what's the point that's what my grandmother always said that's what i say and that's what the burning style of cash pile of cash next to me final news i would have advice for you if I'm alive. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> that was a good pre-show callback. That was a great pre-show callback. Well done. Well done. Ah, uh, final bit of news in uh, in honor of Ian Gibson. I would like to formally announce that the Game Awards are happening Thursday, December ninth. And it will be another 18 hours of live streams that we will watch together uh, and not realize it's going on forever. And I have to drive home from Jersey City at like one in the morning. Ah, <sighs> folks. I just hope it's in person. I can go. <laughs> oh, actually, that didn't even occur to me because he said it was in person, didn't he? Wheat says he that. said live in person, but that could uh, just be they're, they're live. I, wonder and... if I would have to. Oh, I'm not looking forward to maybe having to... things to think about. <laughs> um, oh. Bells. Uh, let me play the music and let's get the heck out of here. I'm tired. I have to up. Folks. We had a good time tonight. We talked about all sorts of delicious things like Nintendo, like the 4K PlayStation acquisition, like the Blue Point Nintendo Switch Perfect Dark update. Uh, God of War is a place that you should go to. David and Elise, thank you for joining me. 
Uh, I couldn't have done it without you. Ian was... Uh, a coward. He was a coward. He <laughs> messaged me and said, you should have a guest ready. And then I got two guests ready. And then he messaged me, hey, I can probably make it. And I said, tough luck. <laughs> Uh, so then he said he had worked 44 hours this week already, and I said, you should just sleep then. So hopefully he's sleeping uh, and dreaming of Gundam. What I'm dreaming about is that this Saturday, we will be doing the first Spooky Pixel 2021 stream where we will be playing Pacify and scaring our literal pants off. I believe it's going to be me, Ian, Kyle, and possibly my brother, Zach don't know yet because he has to check with his wife because he's a baby um what's going on in the save data universe uh tune in tomorrow that is friday is it september 31st october 1st we got save data cast <laughs> <laughs> save data cast uh twitch tv slash save data team we'll be going live at 8 30 eastern 5 30 pacific uh, nice. And we're going to talk about that uh, IGN bracket. We're going to fill our own out. It's going to be a fun time. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, and we will see you all next week.